Coffee Kids recognizes the challenges, the quality of life issues at origin. And we recognize that because we've gone into these coffee farming communities and listened to what they tell us are their challenges. And they tell us repeatedly, coffee is all we have to survive and it's not enough. I need alternatives, I need more options. It's not a year-round income, I don't have enough to feed my family during the dry season when there is no income from coffee. We don't pretend to know what would be the best way to make a better future for them. The respect that we have and the integrity that we've built is because we listen to them and because we follow their vision of the future. One of my favorite quotes is by Eleanor Roosevelt and she said, when you cease to make a contribution, you begin to die. Whatever you do for a living, it's important to recognize the rest of the circle, the rest of everyone else who is related to what you do, and how do your choices impact somebody else. If you're going to be in this industry, it's one thing to buy good coffee and to roast good coffee and sell it and make a profit. It's another thing to be involved. We're a for-profit company. Obviously, we need to make money. But there is another angle of working here. We give back from the get-go. And I think prospective employees like that. They want to be associated with companies that do give back, that the bottom line isn't, uh, isn't constantly the driving force. We have developed a program where each employee, when they uh, start work, gets an orientation about the company, and one of the things it includes is the story of Coffee Kids. We ask people to donate a portion of their monthly paycheck. It might be 25 cents, it might be $5, it might be $10. It's not just writing a check to a, a charity. It's really incorporating that change that Coffee Kids represents into your own work and into your own life. In 1995, I had the opportunity to make a trip to Guatemala and Chiapas, Mexico. It was one of these trips that absolutely changed my life and changed the course of my career com completely. Coffee Kids, in many ways, um, really helps bring a direct, more direct contact uh, for donors. There was a connection, a human connection, um, with small-scale farmers and their families that uh, was very powerful. Living in the communities, working with the communities, talking with the people, really is really to have the, the feeling of the problems, the feeling of the people. Sometimes in our countries, the people only had the opportunity to, to go to the primary school. They are 12 or 13 years old, and they have the capacity to be productive. So the families have to decide, what, what do, do I do? Coffee, perhaps, is not, is not enough. Coffee is a good contribution, but it's not enough. We need to, to have a, a wide thinking on development and on, on opportunities. Coffee. We are merely a part of it. We may have the biggest businesses, we may have the greatest roasters, the fanciest cappuccino machines, we may have the biggest trucks and the biggest bank accounts, but we're merely a part of that process. When I started Coffee Kids 20 years ago, I didn't start it to start a development organization. I did it because I couldn't justify selling one more pound of coffee knowing what I knew about the suffering that coffee farming families had at origin. I confronted the reality that coffee, this magnificent commodity, was hardly as generous to the people who grew and cared for and harvested it. And so that's what led me to start Coffee Kids. We need to respect and honor all the parts of the process. And it begins, if a circle has a beginning in the coffee industry, if it has a beginning, it begins with a farmer and his or her family. Did you
qualquer maneira vai passar. I've actually had um, excursions to coffee growing communities where we have picked coffee for a day or two. And the response I got back was they didn't realize how heavy a cup of coffee was, how much work went into it. When people understand that they make a human connection, then that's good for everybody. You know, you can't just pick the fruit from the tree without nurturing the roots, you know. And that's what it means to the coffee industry, that if you lose your ability to make that connection, your product will never taste as good uh, and may eventually disappear. You cannot separate the people from the product. They're intertwined. In a normal charity situation, um, you may give money, and you may or may not know exactly where the money goes, but what you get back is the good feeling for having given. That's very different in Coffee Kids. In Coffee Kids, you may get back a good feeling from having given, but what you're doing is you're making an investment in people who provide you with the sole raw material of quality that you must have in order to sustain your own family and your own community at home. So it's very much true trading. It's very much commerce of the highest order, each giving the highest value that we have to the other in exchange for a promise to be there next year. It's not enough to just make a profit. It's not enough to have a cup of coffee that tastes great. That's just not enough. It's not enough anymore. What Coffee Kids has done is it's, it's linked the coffee consuming world with the coffee producing world in a way that is remarkable. We talked to the farmers and the families and we basically have said, what is it that you want? And what we heard again and again and again from the farmers is we don't want to be completely tied into just coffee as our only source of income because when we can't make enough money and support our families then we have to leave coffee unless the coffee is being grown and grown well none of us are going to benefit we can't sell it and the farmers are going to have to leave coffee at the end of the day if you ask people what they want <clears throat> the answer is options I want to be able to choose from different things the idea of sustainability is not just to continue life as it is, but to actually make life better. We help coffee farming families create alternative incomes for themselves. We help them to develop their local economy so they can earn an income 12 months a year and um, ensure that they have enough uh, money to put food on the table for their families, uh, send their kids to school if they can, and most importantly, stay at home with their families and their farms and remain coffee farmers. I feel like I'm doing something important. I really do. And I think donors feel the same way when they become involved with the projects. I think that uh, partner communities feel that they actually have donors that care about what's going on. And to be part of that is meaningful. And so when I think about why companies would work with Coffee Kids, I think that they're all looking for some sort of feeling that what they're doing is meaningful and is having an impact. The impact of Coffee Kids projects are very difficult to measure and oftentimes people want very concrete types of statistics and measurements. But how do you measure a woman saying to you, I now have a voice in my own home? We will be around for the next 20 years because we will be needed for the next 20 years, but we'll be here and we'll be helping hopefully more and more coffee farming communities in more and more regions around the world. But we can't do it if people don't understand what their connection is to the coffee farmer and want to help us do our job. Coffee Kids really uh, provides a very human link, uh, or, or puts a face on coffee for me. It really changed me fundamentally as a person and I believe has helped evolve uh, through my efforts and others at Green Mountain, I believe that we've helped evolve our company in a direction that we all feel really good about.